Hey everyone, it's Ron Johnson, and this is the Ron Johnson Show on Locked On Sports Minnesota. We have to talk about the Timberwolves. They lost. The Denver Nuggets, they're a better team than we thought. The number one seed, they deserve it. But what does the rest of the West look like? Should the Timberwolves have beaten the Lakers? Would they now be in, in favor of upsetting the Memphis Grizzlies short Ja Morant? We'll break all that down coming up next on the Ron Johnson Show. Locked On Sports Minnesota Podcast. It's endless Minnesota Vikings talk with the diverse voices of your local experts. Now the Ron Johnson Show. On the field, in the broadcast booth, Ron Johnson is Minnesota sports. He's played with them, hung out with them, and grown up with all the big names in Minnesota sports. They're hanging out with Ron Johnson. It's the Ron Johnson Show on the Locked On Sports Minnesota podcast. And it starts now. Hey everyone, I'm Ron Johnson and this is the Ron Johnson Show. We're going to have to talk about the Timberwolves. We're going to have to talk about KJ Osborne. There was some drama this weekend. Uh, like It was kind of during the week a little bit, but this weekend was some drama with some Vikings players on Twitter. So we're going to have to talk about that Twitter drama and what went down. It was a lot of fans back and forth, but it was it, it, even the Minnesota Vikings organization their twitter account so it's not we're not it's not you know it's not the the higher ups it's not the owners it's not quasi and koc but it, it's that twitter handle and they have to get they have to get permission uh before they tweet some things and they tweeted some stuff too uh with these players so this was it was a drama filled weekend of, of vikings twitter uh and and somehow i ended up in it as just a bystander but we got to talk about that and then, of course, there was a lot of drama within the baseball world. We know what the rules are, but there's some teams that get to skate by the rules, and the Yankees seem to be one of them. The refs, the umps, they like the Yankees when they're good. They don't like the Twins when they're beating the Yankees 11-1, to so we'll break that down. But remember, people, this episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Just visit FanDuel.com backslash Locked On to get started. And also, for those watching on Amazon Fire and Roku, hey, how's it going? Uh, I got a chance to use it last night as well. I I always like to jump on there and just check, but I was on it last night just because I was up. I I couldn't really sleep because I took a nap. Um, I don't know if I took a nap on purpose, but I took a nap knowing that this Timberwolves game was going to be late. And so I was I was kind of still up at like one in the morning. So jumped on the Roku. So for those that have a Roku TV like myself, uh, I have an Amazon Fire as well. Uh, but very simple. Just go to add channel. When you go to add channel, then you search locked on sports. You'll see locked on sports Minnesota. You can just start putting locked on and you'll start to see it. Locked on Sports Minnesota will be down there. Just download it right there to your screen. When you jump on the app, you'll see all of our shows. You'll see Locked on Twins, Locked on Wild, uh, uh, the the football party. And then, of course, you'll see the Ron Johnson show. So make sure for those on an Amazon Fire and the Roku devices. uh, Because it's kind of cool. I watched a couple episodes last night. uh, Just peruse through just to kind of see how it looked, how the the studio looks uh, to the viewers. And uh, for those watching on YouTube as well, welcome. Uh, I'm Ron Johnson. I'm going to bring my uh, producer into the show, Sam Ekstrom, because we have to talk about this, Sam. The Timberwolves got absolutely manhandled. Uh, the Denver Nuggets early on in the game, and, I, and this is the dumbest. I hate when I tweet this stuff because I know it's going to come back and bite me in the butt. Uh, but I tweeted because <laughs> I text you. I text you. I was like, hey, Sam, what was the FanDuel spreads? And you kind of gave me the spreads for FanDuel, and it was Phoenix minus eight, and they lost. It was Sacramento. Minus one, and they and they won. Sorry, yep. it was Memphis minus four and a half, and they lost. And so the trend was lose, win, lose. So then the Denver Nuggets minus eight and a half. I was like, they're gonna win because <laughs> that's just how this algorithm works. <laughs> but it was like eight and a half, and I'm like, man. And my tweet was at the start of the game. I was like, man, the Timberwolves are really hanging in with the Denver Nuggets early on. I was like, that should be a lock. Like that eight and a half, the twim- the Timberwolves, if you bet on the Timberwolves to cover, I was like, that's a lock. The Timberwolves are going to cover this. Eight and a half, they should be able to, even if they lose, maybe they lose by three or four, maybe five. No, they lost by 50. I mean, come <laughs> It's just like, what was going on? And so 
the fact that one, I apologize to the people, even though it was too late to, for you to bet anyway. So I, I don't care. I didn't put your I didn't put your money on the line for that one. Uh, but but when you go to FanDuel, make sure you you take a look at uh, all the metrics. And this is where I go with the Denver Nuggets. I did not realize how efficient the Denver Nuggets are, and this is why they always always find a way to get the ball to Joker if they have to create a set. Now, when they're just flowing and running down the court, you see Michael Porter Jr. Uh, getting run out dunks. You see uh, Jamal Murray with quick throw up threes. But when they are stopped, once the, the action, like if it's not a fast break or a transition, they always get the ball into the Joker's hand or they use them within their pick and roll. And I think that's where, because I, I, when I tweeted about the possible starting five for the Timberwolves, and we'll talk about that. I don't know if we we'll have time today to talk about that, but and this is 2024-2025 season. I've jumped a whole mm-hmm. season now because I, 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 okay. I just don't feel like the, the Nuggets, like I don't think they're going to beat the Nuggets. I'm sorry. I, I'm a little negative. Maybe when they come home, uh, they'll they'll get one or two. I saw some funny tweets with the, the protesters from last year that whenever there was a protester, the Timberwolves was one. Uh, and so people posted a picture of glue gal and uh, chain yourself to the backboard person because uh, those two games, the Timberwolves won. And, you know, they're like, look, we, we got to have a protest at all these games moving forward. I don't know if there's anything to protest right now. Like, Glenn Taylor is not really the owner of the team anymore, so we can't protest his chickens or his animals that he's hurting. Um, the Memphis Grizzlies, I mean, John Morant was suspended, so we can't really protest his gun violence. I mean, I don't – there's nothing to protest. I don't know what you protest with the, with the Timberwolves and the – uh and the Denver Nuggets, sorry, not John Murray, because they're not playing the, but the, the, the Denver Nuggets are one of the most clean cut teams. Uh, again, I haven't researched a ton of Denver, but it doesn't seem like they're ever in the media, like for anything negative. So I just don't know what you protest. I mean, do you protest the weed, but it's legal in Denver. You can't protest that. Uh, you could protest that Minnesota should make it legal to be able to have a little marijuana uh, recreationally uh, to, to fight ever any ailments you have, or just to use it when you're in the comforts of your own home. Either way, I don't know what we protest. Because there's nothing out there to protest right now. Um, so we got to come up with something for somebody to glue themselves to the backboard or something. Because uh, the Timberwolves are going to need it, Sam. But I don't know. Me watching the game, my early reaction is the Timberwolves look overmatched. Uh, Jordan McLaughlin, I, I, I tweeted that, that he's got to work on his finishes. The last three games, every single time he goes to the lane, he doesn't have a plan. He just kind of thinks, like, I'm going to throw this layup up. And then LeBron or Anthony Davis or, or Joker or, or Michael Porter Jr., they're just throwing his stuff to the stands. Like, dude, get that get that little junk out of here, man. Like, what are you doing? And so it just doesn't seem like he – like, I feel like he had a good playoffs last year. Yeah. Everybody was so excited about him. And this year, he's he's been nothing. Like, it, it, there's been no help for Mike Conley Jr. And so – I don't know. I, I just don't know what the answer is to this, whether it's you don't put him on the court and you you move into a package where Anthony Edwards becomes your point guard for a little bit. I don't know. But again, those the, the I saw somebody tweet about the altitude and the lungs and all that stuff. And so maybe that's why they left the Timberwolves in the game late, just to get used to the altitude because they have to play one more there. So I don't know. I, I don't know what the answer is. They're going to get a chance to practice. I'm guessing they're going to stay and practice down there. Um, right, because that's what it is. 2-2-1-1-1, two, two, one, 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 right? Correct. So they play yeah. Wednesday. Yeah. So they're gonna stay. They're gonna get to. I, I don't because unless unless I'm wrong, and they're gonna fly back to Minnesota just to fly back to Denver. I'm, my guess is they're gonna stay to get used to the altitude, practice out there, get ready for that, and then maybe they have a different outcome, Sam. But personally, right now they just look overmatched. Uh, the Nuggets look like a well-oiled, rested machine uh, that deserved the number one seed because every other series did not go the way we thought. Like you said, Phoenix losing. I never would have put the Clippers on that win, but. I will say this: Russell Westbrook is the is the like resiliency poster child. Dude was three for nineteen, three for nineteen, and he took the last shot of the game or one of the last crucial shots of the game and got fouled. Like that's resilient confidence, right there. When you're three for nineteen, I know every Suns fan was excited when Russell Westbrook took the ball at the end and started trying to back down Devin Booker. And then Devin Booker bought, uh, bailed him out. Because I don't think if you swipe, I don't think he makes that shot. It was a brick. Like, that thing was hitting the backboard. It almost broke the backboard. Uh, but they did. And Sacramento won, beating Golden State. I didn't see that coming. Um, but, again, Sacramento, they're 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 playing well. Those two guards, uh, Fox and uh, Monk. Monk. They're playing well. And they're Kentucky grads. So, they, like, they have a pass. And so it's working. Uh, Memphis, like I said, them losing. I didn't see that coming. 
But John Morant said he can't even use his right hand right now. So it might be, and I say over because they've played decent. And we'll maybe break this down tomorrow, how they've played when he's out. Uh, Because he has been out. We know that. Mm -hmm. But I just don't feel like that team can beat the Lakers in seven without John Morant. So that's why I kind of brought that up. It's like, man, if the Timberwolves had just beat uh, the Lakers and the butterfly effect, who knows? John Morant, like he tried to dunk on Anthony Davis and Anthony Davis took the charge. Rudy Gobert might have let him dunk. I don't know. Because they just they don't look very interested. But I don't know. What what were your thoughts uh, from the weekend of just not the Timberwolves, but the basketball weekend? Yeah. Can't go much worse. For the Timberwolves, which in some way is, I don't know, it's weirdly encouraging, Ron. This doesn't make any sense, but here's (laughs) how my mind works. Here's how my mind works. If the Wolves had gone out last night with a great effort and lost by one, Mm -hmm. I would be deflated because I would say to myself, I don't think they can muster that same kind of performance in game two. I think that they're going to go down 0-2. They're done for. Because it was so bad, like so bad, Cat, horrible. Gobert, horrible. Like, really bad. Edwards had about five minutes where he was getting his shots, and then he stopped. Um, They shot 37% from the field, 31% from three, 56% from the line, minus 16 in rebounds, minus 12 in points in the paint. So clearly they played their worst possible game. So I I still believe that there is a better Wolves performance in the tank in game two if they just show up. They didn't show up at all. I thought their rotations were weird. Their big men were so out of sync. Like, Ron, you you watched the Friday game, I'm sure, against Oklahoma City. The big men were dominating against a smaller team. And then against the the bigger Nuggets, they they had absolutely nothing going uh, with Gobert and Cat. So I think there's a lot of room to improve. That's, That's the only positive to come out of this. But the only guy who showed up and maybe showed up a little too hard in the end when he got in a fight, Kyle Anderson. I thought Kyle Anderson was the one guy that kind of like came to play. Yeah. Otherwise, it was it was a complete no show by the Wolves. Yeah, and and again, I'm I'm a I'm a fan like John Madden, for instance. I'm a fan of doing the same thing over and over and over again until they stop you. Kyle Anderson at the free throw line extend, so he was getting that little pick and pop like from the free throw line because Djokovic didn't want or Jokic didn't want to jump out at him. The Joker mm-hmm. did not want to come too high up. Um exactly he hit like four of those from the free throw line um and i don't know why the timberwolves went away from like just keep doing it until they change because i know at one point they called a timeout the the nuggets did to figure this out and i'm like just keep going to it and see what they're what is there because i think chris finch overthought it like oh they called a timeout so they're they're gonna have something for that just do it anyway it's basket it's not football like it's not like you only get four downs like and you so you're over guessing some calls like, they don't know what – like, if you run the ball three times with Dalvin Cook and all of a sudden it's eight in the box, you're like, okay, we can't run it now. Let's run play action. No, this is basketball. You run that same play again and just see, but then have a counter to the set. So say, hey, Kyle, we're going to keep doing this. Now if Joker comes up, now here's the rebuttal. Back him back. See how far back he will like, – like, like Steph does. When Steph Curry gets the matchup he wants, no matter how close he is – he will back that guy all the way back out to the three-point line because he's like, look, I know I'm better than you within this space. And so Kyle Anderson has to, even though Kyle is super slow, but he has to understand he has that advantage over the Joker because he doesn't want to waste energy and run around like that. And so I thought that's where the Timberwolves failed is not continuing to just do that over and over and over again. Anthony Edwards from the elbow extend, same thing. He was getting some nice little you know, jumpers there. They just, I just don't feel like they 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 trusted that plan because that plan was working early on. Uh, going down and half, they weren't down by much. And then in the third quarter, I don't know what happened in the locker room. I don't know what was said. But they got absolutely killed in the third quarter. And then, of course, from there, just snowballed. There was no stopping it, 80 to 109. Uh, the Nuggets just looked like a better team. They just looked like a better team. Um, I, I don't know the answer for it because if Carl Anthony Towns only scores 11, uh Rudy Gobert scores eight which he's not a big score anyway but Anthony Edwards 18 that's your leader Mike Conley we were expecting you know him to continue again who knows if he can carry on with the heater he had you know in the last two games against the Lakers and the Thunder but then you know Jalen Noel and then Torian Price you know he's the guy that I thought Prince sorry I, he's the guy mm-hmm. that I thought has to carry the load uh when you're missing uh Nas Reed and uh Jay McDaniels and he scored zero points he took some shots 
and could not score. He took some shots and could not score. So, you know, and then the whole Austin Rivers thing. Like, I don't know what's going on. Like, he's not really contributing at all. And so it's just, it it, it sucks. Because Nas Reed, that's a tough loss. But Jay McDaniels is a dumb loss. Like, that's a that's a self-inflicted. That's a that's a Cheddar Bob, 8 Mile, uh, shoot yourself. And, and I don't know, Sam, you've probably never seen 8 Mile, have you? With Eminem? No. Oh, my goodness. How have you not no, seen 8 Mile? That's bad. That's a bad one. That I, is a I, great movie. I know it's a great movie. That's a bad miss on my part. I know. I don't know what it. like yeah. eight mile with Eminem. Like that was like his coming out party to be like not just a rapper, but an actor, uh, which if I think about, it, I don't know if he did any other movies after that, but maybe I don't know the Eminem catalog of movies, uh, but great movie. But yeah, Cheddar Bob shoots himself. He did the Plaxico or Plaxico Burris. You know that one. Uh, how about that? The yep. Plaxico Burris. Yep. That's what the Jade McDaniels, Jade McDaniels, is equivalent to Plaxico Burrs, but it didn't see Plaxico Burrs. That was off season. He did have to go to jail because he had a gun. But Cheddar Bob shooting yourself like you shot yourself in the foot because Jade McDaniels could have helped on the Joker, and so could uh, Nas Reed. And I think that's where you say Kyle Anderson on Joker long term. And I get it because I said this too. And you remember this? I said do not put Carl Anthony Towns on him long term because he will fall out because that guy has move after move after move. He travels. Like I saw the video that just got posted. He travels a lot. Like he moves his pivot foot because he spins and he cuts and he spins and he pumps and he spins and he does it so much he forgets. And the refs are just like, oh yeah, let's go around. Do, 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 do. Like call the travel, call the charge. Like they're like, oh, he's a bully. Uh, talk about uh Gordon. Aaron Gordon's a bully. He ran him over. If that, that like that's either football, that's a first down, or that's a charge. That was not a basketball play, but I get it. Playoff basketball, they were trying to let it, you know. No, that's a charge. No highlight should be given. Go the other way. Like these refs, they got to get it together. They got to get it together, Sam. But it's time to talk about a little drama because there was some drama this weekend. <laughs> like Twitter, I love Twitter drama because I'm petty. And uh, I'm going I'm to break down the whole story because one, one of our everydayers, one of our, uh, you know, locked on Ron Johnson show fans, Ron and Sam fans. Uh, you know, he was like, oh, you guys got to talk about this on the Ron Johnson show. So I'm like, you know what? Get the fans what they want. Get the people what they want, Sam. They want to hear about the drama. And I've got DMs, too. This is stuff that people have not seen on Twitter. I'm, I'm getting DMs from people uh, involved because they're DMing me. Uh, I even <laughs> I don't know if I should say it. Well, it's not. It's in the works. But let's just say there was some conversation with me and the Minnesota Vikings about this. <laughs> and so there might be a petty video that I'm going to put out on Vikings.com. Uh, we're, 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 we're trying to figure out how to do it. Uh, what's the word? Uh, gracefully, I guess, or I don't know. I don't know. I know the Vikings don't want to be immediate like drama and give, give credit to people for creating drama. Uh, mm -hmm. but we're going to, we're going to do it gracefully, but no, I got some DMS. I got some other stuff. So we'll, we'll talk about that next, yeah. uh, on the Ron Johnson show. I'm looking forward to that, but, so Vikings players got a little, were they sensitive or was it worth it? Was it justified sensitivity or justification? We'll talk about that next on the Ron John show, but we have a word from our sponsors. Today we are brought to you by FanDuel, the official sports book of Locked On. It's America's number one sports book. And as the NBA playoffs have arrived, it's a great time to get in the action. Ron told you, Underdogs are winning. At least two of the games yesterday are in the Western Conference. Uh, no customers can claim a no-sweat first bet when they sign up, when they get in the action. Up to $1,000 back in bonus bets if that first bet doesn't win. Download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. Safe, secure, super easy to use. Bet on everything from money lines to point scorers to the first basket maker. Three-pointers made, 20-point scorers, 30-point scorers. Hundreds of ways to wager at FanDuel. You can also stack your bets within the same game for a same game parlay. Don't miss your chance also at that no sweat first bet up to $1,000 back in bonus bets. If that first bet doesn't win, fanduel.com slash locked on to get started. Fanduel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with Fanduel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Well, Sam, we got to talk about the drama. Uh, it, the drama started, it came across my timeline because the Minnesota Vikings actually uh, tweeted or responded to KJ Osborne. And the Minnesota Vikings responded to KJ Osborne with a, you know, like a, yeah, that uh, it was like a gif of KJ Osborne celebrating after I yeah. think it was the Panthers. His game winning win. touchdown, I think. Yeah. And so yeah. they're just like, 
hey, you know, this is this is going to be a thing, you know, like he this is the guy, you know. But again, this is the social media team. Uh, because I love when the draft comes around because the social media team always like tweets out the PSA of we cannot go tell uh the owners, the Wilfs, who to draft. We cannot tell Quasi and KOC who to draft. We will let you know who they draft, but stop asking us to get a guard. Stop acting, you know, because that was the thing, what, two years ago. You, you know, it was the meme, go get a guard, go get a guard. And they're like, look, we like their KLC is not looking at Vikings Twitter. Neither is Quasey. But the Vikings did tweet uh, in response, like KJ Osborne is him. Like he is, he is a good receiver. Um, and But KJ Osborne, his tweet was more just like to the person. I don't even know if I want to give this person like any like publicity of this, but he just tweeted to the person. The person tweeted, there's no quality receivers behind justin jefferson there's no quality dbs other than byron murphy um there's no quality there's no linebacker depth on the depth piece understandable because you and i broke that down about what's needed in the draft how many mm -hmm. you know players they went to training camp with how many players they need uh what do we think they should do with the first round pick you know who's going to be receiver too but quality versus quantity and that's where we are quality versus quantity if you want to say quantity of receiver quantity of db quantity of linebacker you have a point there there is there needs to be everybody that's what happens when you have a lot of uh mass exodus of big time talent like eric kendricks uh uh adam thielen uh, the list goes on of all the guys we Patrick Peterson, you know, all the guys we saw that we were like, uh, I don't know what's going to happen. And they're gone. You have that mass exodus, Irv Smith Jr. So that, that, that goes without saying, then there's only five draft picks right now. So of course this Dalvin cook, possible trade, possible cut June one, possible trade after the draft that's still on the table as well, because they need young talent or cheap talent. That is actually talent, though, that can fit within their salary cap because of all the contracts and the dead cap space they're going to lose in the next year or two. Mm -hmm. But the quality, in my opinion, is there. You can't say there's no quality. You can say there's no quantity. And KJ Osborne just said, hey, so-and-so, let me know what a quality receiver is in your book. And he just has the gift of the guy writing because he was like, I'm taking notes. Let me know. And then... <laughs> A Caleb Evans gets involved and he's like, oh, this guy's an idiot. Da, da, da. Like he doesn't know anything like, and then this guy comes back and says, Hey, why don't you come to my podcast? A Caleb. <laughs> and, and I think Caleb, a Caleb, a Caleb's like, I don't want to talk to you, <laughs> but it was even worse. Did you see what his tweet was? Like, did you see his response? His exact words? Uh, yeah. I mean, tell the people, but yeah, I did see that. He said, I would rather be a Packer fan. I'll be a Packer <laughs> fan before I come on your show. I'll cheer for the Packers to win before I come on your show. And so I'm like, that's harsh. That's that's really harsh. Uh, but I get it. Like, he doesn't want anything to do with this guy. Um, and and so, I like, from a DB standpoint, so from a, from a, a Caleb Evans point, we can say these guys are whatever they are. Like, we haven't seen Andrew Booth Jr., so we don't know. We haven't seen enough of Caleb Evans to even really know before the concussion started. Um, Byron Murphy, like Cardinals, good. Was he going to be in this system as the number one guy? We don't know. Uh, we do know Harrison Smith. We do know uh, Cam Bynum. Uh, we do know Josh Metellus. Uh, Lewis Seen, we don't know. And so the quality, quantity, DB conversation is a little different than receiver because theoretically – if you're going to run the ball, you did add Josh Oliver, which I watched some, some Ravens highlights because, I mean, they're all over TV right now because of Lamar Jackson. And so Josh Oliver flashes every once in a while with a, a, a simple catch, but very sure-handed and burrows through people, like runs people over to get to the end zone. Like, I mean, that guy is a bowling ball. Like he is very, very violent after the catch like when he gets the ball he reminds me of cj ham but bigger and faster like he is violent when he gets the ball and so i get that side of it you know you you can go you can go there with the quality quantity argument with db because you just don't know what you have but with receiver you got a guy in kj osborne who's at 43 career games he's had 110 catches but in 2022 
2022, he split time with Adam Thielen. So he wasn't wide receiver two. He had 60 catches in 2022 in 17 games. 60 catches, 650 yards, 10, almost 11 yards a catch, and five touchdowns. 95.6 in fantasy points. So how is that not quality? 60 catches in college is huge. In the pros, that's not easy to come by as receiver three. Receiver three. So when you say, because I see people say, well, he's a top 10 receiver three. But then imagine if he were receiver two. If he can get you 60 catches as receiver three, and that's where I go with this. You just do the math and do the metrics and you change the, the, the narrative. He's an 80 to 90 catch guy. Like he can get you 80 to 90 catches because all those additional like out routes, all those quick hitches when Adam Thielen was in the game, all those red zone looks are now going to KJ out. That five touchdowns as a three goes to 10 as a two. Like easily because he takes over the Adam Thielen role. And so do we not think KJ Osborne can do what Adam Thielen did? I think he can. He has the speed. He has the size. Like he has the ability. So the quality argument there to me is dumb. He's definitely a quality receiver. So that's why I came and I just said, hey, like I like, and I also told the Vikings and, you know, I'm not going to, because it might not happen, but we'll see um, what I want to do in response to this with using KJ Osborne. And so, you know, the Vikings are like, oh, we have to see how that will look. Where, where are we going to use it on? Uh, who would be around? Because we got only two weeks to the draft and I get that. Um, so I'm going to be doing some draft stuff for them. They, they did say that, like, hey, we're going to, we want to use you for some draft stuff. Um, but not sure about this whole KJ Osborne video thing, which is petty. Like I told him, like, even if I do it the morning of the draft and just come over and shoot some stuff, uh, just cause we have some time and you know, the, the video guys aren't really doing much the morning of the draft and the fact that we might even draft a guy in the first round, but I was like, I'll come over early, uh, before the draft and shoot something or, you know, the week of, or even this week, if, if, you know, the, cause there are a lot of people on vacation for people that don't know this, a lot of the Vikings employees are on vacation. Um, you know, I know Gabe Henderson, uh, was taking time away from the facility. Uh, his wife is also pregnant. So he has, you know, he has that bundle of joy coming soon. Uh, and so, yeah, so it's, it's a lot going on over there. So I know everybody's kind of mm-hmm. taking their time. Tatum Everett's, you know, doing her bachelorette party. I saw, so, you know, <laughs> the Vikings are in full force of vacation mode right now, getting ready. Cause when the draft hits, then that's when the content has to get pumped out. So I was like, all right, I get it. I'll, I'll you know, let's take this week off. I know everybody's gone. Uh, one of the head guys, text me back he's in mexico right now so i'm like man like this is a, i guess this is the week like hey there's nothing going on that we can do right now as a video content d and team so take your vacation now take your two weeks now because week of the draft you're all hands on deck as well as we will be on locked on uh bring you all the draft coverage uh but sam what, what are your thoughts mm-hmm. on kj osborne and, and is he you know quality versus quantity or is he a wide receiver three and you think they need to go get deandre hopkins no, this is this is a bad take by our, our Twitter guy. Um, and he he got jumped on. You know, he he got the full the full barrage. I think KJ jumped in the mix, Adam Thielen jumped in the mix, Josh Metellus, Caleb Evans, the Vikings Twitter. So <laughs> he he got he got hammered for this take. Um I I don't know how you can watch KJ Osborne, and I've been at training camp too. I've seen this guy in a practice setting and, and say that he's not a quality receiver. Um, I think he's gonna thrive as a wide receiver too, sure handed tough after the catch. Um, very consistent too. I mean, t- in two years as a wide receiver three with Justin Jefferson on your team. So Jefferson's taken up a lot of the targets. Osborne got 655 yards and 650 yards. That's exactly what you want from wide receiver three. He filled his role perfectly. Um, so if you give him a step up or a promotion, in a contract year for him, I think that he's a thousand yard threat. I, I really do. And and he's shown no indication that he's not going to stay healthy either. He's very durable, uh, gets tough yards. I love KJ Osborne. And he's also one of those really hard workers in the off season where, you know, he and he and Jefferson might be working together. Um, I could easily see that happening down in Florida where Jefferson trains. Osborne is a, is a Miami grad. They, they're probably working together trying to sharpen each other this offseason. I think Osborne could explode this year. Uh, can't wait to see what he does, and, and I hope he stays a Viking beyond this year too. 
Yeah, I mean, that, that's the key is like you do need two receivers. You think about Reggie Wayne and Marvin Harrison. You know, it's always, you know, Jerry Rice um, and John Taylor. You got Lynn, Lynn Swan and John Stallworth. You know, there's most, uh, what is it, uh, T. Higgins and Jamar Chase. You know, it was Justin Jefferson and Adam Thielen. Now it's Justin Jefferson and K.J. Osborne. K.J. Osborne has to create that number two name for himself. Like every number two receiver didn't start off as like this guy's number two. It didn't. Like most of these number two receivers had to go get now. Some were like John Starworth and, and, and Lynn Swan were like basically what could have been ones on anybody's team. Uh they and Marvin Harrison and Reggie Wayne for sure were ones. Um, just you know, it was the perfect draft situation for the for the Indianapolis Colts to have those guys. Um and, and, and they had Peyton Manning, of course. But when you when you think about that, like there's rare opportunities, you know, very rare opportunities where you get two dogs and you're like, Let's go. Here's our two. And that's why, you know, it'll be interesting to see with uh, the Ravens now, OBJ and uh, Rashad Bateman. How do, how do they work together? You know, is, 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 is OBJ going to elevate him? Because Lamar wanted, which I, I, I'm confused about that one. He wanted uh, DeAndre Hopkins, too. He's like, I want D-Hop. I want uh, OBJ and already got Bateman. So is Bateman three in that situation? Because it sounds like it. So I'm, I'm wondering, like, like, if I'm Bateman, do I take offense to that? Like, why do you need so many receivers, bro? Like, I'm here. Now, I get it. He hasn't been healthy every year either. Um, but, man, like, I wonder if that's Lamar's like, man, this, this dude can't stay healthy. So, I, I need me three receivers. Like, I want to be able to throw the ball. I don't want to just run all the time. But, again, finding two receivers is hard. And so, I think the Vikings, you know, Justin Jefferson, K.J. Osborne, maybe this is the two that they go on for a while. Like, Randy Moss and Chris Carter. You know, you got to have two at least you know especially if you're if you're yeah. if you're gonna pass the ball you gotta have to and, and i i get the twitter person like i get their thought behind it but it was wrong <laughs> i'm gonna just be honest it was wrong it was a horrible take it was wrong uh he is quality uh depth after kj osborne then we can have that conversation there's no depth after kj osborne like there's not a third receiver right now that you feel like okay they can go in and they got this like we don't know who three is. Three is going to be a yeah. competition, plus maybe a rookie drafted, uh, maybe a free agent picked up late uh, that's just out there still that's looking for a home and is willing to take a million bucks, you know, whatever the Vikings have for the veteran minimum. Um, and it could be, like you said, it could be a, a bigger name than we thought, you know, who's still out there. Because, again, a lot of these guys are waiting to after the draft. A lot of these GMs have to wait to after the draft. Let's see what we can draft, and then let's go pick up some of these cheaper veteran free agents. Um, but until then... The qual the quantity conversation, we can have that all day. There's only two. But the quality, nah, you can't do that. You can't have that. Uh, but remember, people, uh, Locked On Sports Minnesota is a proud partner with Care 11. Just check out care11.com backslash locked on for links to every one of our locked on shows. And remember, you can also check out the football party. I want to thank the everydayers for making the Ron Johnson show their first listen. But remember, Check out the Minnesota football party, whether if you're on the uh, uh, iTunes, you're on iHeartMedia app, or you're on Spotify, or you're watching on YouTube, or you've joined into the world of me, like I just did, and you've downloaded the app to your Roku to TV device or your Amazon Fire, or whichever one you do, check out our other shows. Uh, you can get some little nuggets here, and especially with the Wild. The Wild heading into the playoffs, and we'll talk about that in the Daily 3. You're going to want to check out Locked on Wild uh, because they do have, like, Kevin Gorg joins every once in a while. They have some good stuff uh, heading into the playoffs versus the Dallas Stars. Um, but, you know, we got the Daily 3 coming up. And that's, that's you know, this is going to get fast-paced, fun part of the show, favorite part of the show. And uh, it's me and Sam. So take it away. All right, Ron. Let's start out with the Twins. They played a four-game series against the New York Yankees over the mm -hmm. weekend. Game one went great. 11 to 2. Twins scored nine in the first. Game two went great. Late comeback, scored a couple in the eighth, won at four to three. Then things got weird on Saturday. The Yankees pitcher got checked by the umpires. He had tacky, sticky substance on his hands. The umpire told him to wash it off. He comes back out. He still got sticky uh, substance on his hands. And what do the umpires do? They should they toss him out of the game, right? No, they don't. They don't toss him out of the game. They let him go pitch. Rocco Baldelli gets tossed out of the game for arguing it. What do you make of that whole bizarre Yankees uh, sticky substance situation? Um, I call it human beings. 
this is the problem with some of these rules. When there is not an end-all, be-all. So when you think about the commissioner, for instance, of the NFL, he's the end-all, be-all for a lot of stuff unless they go to arbitration. But again, he's a human being. So that's why some people are like, you know, some people get harsher pen, you know, punishment than others. I think the, the 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 problem with the umpires is the allure of the Yankees. Now, if this were the Twins versus the Guardians, for instance, they're playing Cleveland Guardians. That pitcher's gone. Like, I don't think it's if that were the Twins pitcher versus the Yankees, that pitcher is gone. It's the Yankees. The fact that they got shellacked by the Twins in the first one. 11 runs and then you lose four to three they're like look man look um i don't know what you gotta do to get it going again but let's juice these balls up and they get caught and if you get caught you're supposed to get tossed no questions asked you don't get to go wash it off like that's like saying oh he has a cork bat uh yeah okay can you go get a different bat no you're out of here you got caught cheating you're out of here and you're facing a possible fine um like, I don't get it. Like, what, what's the point of making these rules when you're not going to follow them? Because other pitchers, I've seen other pitchers get tossed because they're staring at the ump as he's holding his hand and he's making it weird. I can't remember. I remember, like, I don't remember what pitcher ump that was. But remember, they got into it because the ump ch checked him the first time and he thought it felt weird. But the guy was like, it's nothing. My hands are sweaty. So he goes back out there. I think he grabs the rosin bag or something. He comes back. And as the ump's doing it, he's like staring at the guy like longer, like trying to get a, a reaction out of him. And the pitcher doesn't take the bait. He just kind of like, like, man, do your job and let me walk out of here. Like, be done. And so you have that. You have umps that overdo it for some pitchers because they have a vendetta out against them. Like, I just watched the pitcher from Florida get tossed because he screamed when he got a guy on, uh, I think it was like two outs, two on, and he struck him out from Florida. And they tossed him because all he did was like scream like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he didn't point. He didn't, he just was looking at his catcher, maybe the batter, but he's like, yeah, yeah. And he's a college kid showing joy for just striking a guy out with two on two outs. And then they toss him like, and he doesn't even like angle towards the batter. He's like, he's, he's doing it as he's walking to his dugout and they tossed him. So then the next guy from Florida hits a grand slam. And his celebration, I don't know if you've seen this, Sam, but you got to watch it. It's the funniest. Mm -hmm. He does the, like, waddle walk because he doesn't want to over-celebrate. But that's just my thought. <laughs> like, the, the, the umps are making this crazy, and players are just trying to adjust. But that's where it's getting to the point where umps are umps are trying to be the focal point of the games, and they have to stop. I don't know. What are your thoughts? Yeah, it seems too subjective. Um, it does seem like you shouldn't have that much wiggle room to be able to tell the pitcher, A, you get a chance to wash it off and B, if you don't wash it off, you still get another chance. Right. Like how many strikes are we going to give you? Um, I, I, maybe I understand giving him one, one try. Like it, like maybe it wasn't super sticky. Maybe it was just a little <laughs> something. Um, and may, maybe, and they claimed that it didn't violate the policy. They claimed that it wasn't like bad enough to violate the policy. Okay. So you gave him one chance, but then, second chance still doesn't you know get get it all off that's where i think you have to draw the line so i get why rocco baldelli was upset and uh oh by the way the twins lost the game and they lost the next day too so ended up being uh, a, a split in the series and uh you know the other thing too ron is that pitcher that had the, the sticky stuff in his hands he was pitching great yeah. He had like a no hitter through the first three innings or something. So of course he did. Yeah, might have <laughs> contributed to to how well the Yankees pitched in that game. Wow. Well, Sam, what you got next? Yeah. Um. All right. NBA playoffs. We had eight games over the weekend. Mm -hmm. Uh. What else caught your eye during the NBA uh, game ones of the NBA playoffs? Uh. You know what? Something that caught my eye is more of a rule change, and and I've and I've looked at this too. The players. So taking charges. So. Players moving their feet last minute while a player has already started like his mo momentum to go up and dunk a ball. Players are sliding underneath them. And it's like Joel B got hurt. Greek Freak got hurt. John Morant got hurt. And, you know, and so now I'm wondering like Anthony Edwards. Now Anthony Edwards is a little bit better athlete. He kind of came down. Uh, but same thing. Like he went up and they stepped under him. He got the foul call because it was late. But we've got to put something in place to for player safety. 
Um, now, again, I will say this. If it wasn't superstars, I don't know if we'd even be talking about this, but the fact that three superstars got hurt on the same type of play, uh, that's when it's like, all right, I, I do get it. Uh, now, in the 80s and 90s, the fouls were a lot different when you went up like that. Like, it was the Jordan rule. We're going to knock you out the air and crush you, and you got to figure out how to play through this. Uh, now it's just like, look, I'm just trying to take a charge and you're like so athletic and above me, you're flipping over me. Um, Anthony Edwards did get flipped, but I think his was defensively though, right? He was on defense when his, when he flipped and landed on the shoulder, didn't, wasn't that what it was? He jumped in. Yeah. So yeah, so his wasn't offense, but his offensive one this weekend, like, or sorry, yesterday you saw him kind of go up through the middle and he got fouled. Uh, but it, the guy was so tall and he wasn't really trying to dunk it. So it was more like a balance. Like I'm going to try to, you know, double pump take the hit lay it up but John ja Morant's hand like he said it doesn't work <laughs> like that's not good so yeah so I, I, I that was the one thing that caught my eye is like some of the like some of the things where you're like this is just simple common sense like you cannot run under a guy after he's already started his motion to go up now if you step in there and he hasn't taken his two steps yet great you you got to the spot before he did but this whole like he's on that last step and you slide over last minute and you're just in his way he's about to dunk in the middle like you're gonna get people killed, because these guys, these players are way too bouncy and athletic now, and they're all gonna like. And then if the, and if all the stars get hurt, do we even want to watch that? Like we don't want to watch that. And I think that's why that came up. But that's that that was one thing that caught my eyes. Like some of these weird like situations, the, the NBA's got to figure out. I don't know. Did you see anything special? <clears throat> well, it, just to back up your point, it's a reminder that the NBA playoffs is kind of a war of attrition. Like who can stay healthiest and avoid the big injuries? And we've mm -hmm. already seen. The Bucks lose their star. The Grizzlies uh, losing their star. Timberwolves are super banged up, and that's affecting their play. So, and, and you know, you got some teams too, like the Suns, for instance. They haven't been healthy. They haven't really had everybody together that much, and they looked a little bit out of sorts, uh, and they lose that game. So it's the healthy teams that end up kind of advancing over a seven-game series. And that's part of the reason why the Timberwolves are going to have a tough time because they're they're so undermanned. That rotation is so short. One other quick thought, Ron, from me. I don't know if I love the, the the challenge rule in the NBA. Like they they went from the extreme where they reviewed everything to now they've got the one challenge. Right. And it's so hard to know when to use it. Like the Timberwolves on Friday, they used it in the second quarter to get a possession. And it just fe it felt dumb, even though it was a guaranteed win. They're definitely going to win the challenge. It just felt like a bad time to use it. But they're also getting punished for a horrible call. So I think you got to alter it a little bit. You got to give teams a little bit more leeway <laughs> to get stuff reviewed. I don't know what the perfect formula is, but giving them one chance at a review for the whole game just seems a little, a, a little bit too small of a, of a chance to correct calls. Yeah, no, I think, I think the XFL at least got that part, right? I like how they do the booth, you know, helps the refs out within that play clock. So it's like, Hey, you're going to get 20 seconds. We're gonna view this real quick. We'll we'll whistle down and tell you. Well, you know, hey, nope, nope, nope. It's it was a fumble. You know, don't even worry about taking your time. Like we saw, it. it's a fumble. Let's move on. Like, yeah, I think the NBA needs to do something like that. Like they can they can rewind quick, see it. Yep, hit off his leg, man. It's their ball. Don't even waste your time with this. Let's move on to the next play. Oh yeah, because uh, yeah, the challenge in the NBA is way too many plays uh, to only have one challenge. Where the NFL, it doesn't happen as much. Uh, last one. What you got? All right. Play, it's playoff week. We got Wolves in the playoffs. We got Wild in the playoffs. Game one at Dallas tonight. Wild and Stars. I want a series prediction from the hockey aficionado, <laughs> Ron Johnson. What's Who's going to win and in how many games? Well, you know, as they say, uh, let's do that hockey. Uh, I'm excited about them doing some hockey tonight. Uh, I, I will say, like, playoff hockey, we talked about it last year. Like, that's the only time I'm really, like, watching. And if we're at a restaurant, you know, I might peek at it, you know, because it's playoff time. Uh, but other than that, because this is the time of the year, like, I know, uh, which seems like the playoffs are earlier this year or something, or I don't know, because I know last year during the, the hockey playoffs, yeah. the, my wife's uh, school was having their prom. Uh, which was like May, so I feel like this is a little early. But May, am I right? This is it earlier this year. No, I think you are. I think you are. I think the pandemic screwed up the NHL schedule a little bit because uh, I remember last year we we did all the Wolves playoff games, and then after that the Wild started their playoffs. So okay. I think it is. I was different. like, I know I'm not crazy because I'm like normally I, I, I it's warmer out. I'm I'm watching other stuff. Uh, my kids, you know, softball games and I'm checking in on the wild, but yeah. So, you know, I, I, this is the thing about the wild. I don't, I don't know much about the two teams. Uh, I will say this. If Kirill Kaprizov has himself a series, 
uh, they should be able to win. And I, and I think that's the, the key to this. Um, he has to play lights out. He has to be a star. You know, Connor McDavid and their group, he like Kirill has to be that guy. If he doesn't, they're not going to win. Like if they if he's struggling, uh, he's not going to win. I think the goalkeepers too, figuring out which which is going to be between the pipes, that's going to be a tough decision. Uh, Dean has a tough decision to make because both have been playing well. But if you use the numbers, um, that should be your answer. But again, that's not always what it is. It's you have to look at all the factors, and so that's where I go. My prediction, um, it's tough. I don't have one. I don't have a predict like, but I'm going to say the Wild win this series. I, I think they are the better team. They should win this series. But I know you're the hockey guy, so I'll let you go. Yeah, I man, I felt so good about the Wild about two weeks ago when they couldn't lose. I thought that they were going to win the Central. Thought they were going to win the West. I thought they were going to have home ice and just the last. Everybody just kept on winning. The Stars kept on winning. The Avalanche kept on winning, and the Wild just slipped up a little bit. And now they're the three seed, and uh, the path seems harder now. But I think that if they get their guys a little healthier, I know they they had some nicks and bruises down the stretch. If they they come out full squad, I think they win this series in seven. I think it goes the distance. Um, but you know what the key is, Ron? Like you said, it's goaltending. Mm-hmm. Is, is Gustafson going to be the guy? And if he is. How is he going to respond in, in the playoffs? Because like Flurry, you kind of know what you're going to get. Gustafson's a little more of a wild card. He hasn't been in this spot. Um, that's the key. Can he stand on his head a little bit and steal a game here on the road in game one or game two? That's the key. Yeah. Well, the key is we're out of here. That's Locked On Sports. I'm Ron Johnson. That's Sam Ekstrom. Tomorrow, you're not going to want to miss this. Blake Barrett's. He is Adam Thielen and C.J. Ham's agent. So he's been dealing directly with the Minnesota Vikings and all these type of contract situations. C.J. resigned after, you know, his usage went down, but then they resigned him. So clearly maybe they're going to use him more. Adam Thielen, too much money, didn't want him anymore, moved on. He is now a Carolina Panther, but Blake's going to talk about that with Adam Thielen and uh, C.J. Ham. Also, NFL rule changes and some things he thinks the owners need to look into. He has a very big opinion, and I'm glad we got him on our show. Um, so I'm looking forward to sitting down with him tomorrow. And they also got Roy Hall, uh, former Ohio State Buckeye, coming up. Uh, their their receivers coach at Ohio State, Brian Hartline, just uh, had a, a, a ATV accident in his own on his own property at one in the morning. Um, and so you know, prayers for him. But we're gonna talk to Roy about that, about Ohio State, uh, the coaching staff. You know, where, what's next for them? And also, he's a public speaker now. Play for the Indianapolis coach Reggie Wayne. Uh, I coached him. When I was there for those two years, and so uh, get a chance to talk to Roy uh, will be fun on Wednesday as well. So make sure you guys don't miss those two. Blake is going to drop some hot fire. Trust me, the guy has a lot to say when it comes to the Minnesota Vikings, Adam Thielen, Kirk Cousins, and C.J. Ham. Remember, if you want endless Vikings talk, make sure you subscribe to the Locked On Sports Minnesota YouTube channel where you can find all of our videos, all of our shows, instant podcasts after every game. And all the Vikings press camp. So as the draft goes, you're going to want to stick around because we are going to have a lot of draft takes about who they take, if they trade back, if they trade up, what happens. Is Hendon Hooker going to come to the Vikings? I don't know. But you got to find out when we – sorry, when we find out, we'll let you know as well. Uh, but stick around. I'm Ron Johnson. That was Sam Ekstrom. Have a great day.